everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today I have a treat for you. We are going to play the Infinity Stone campaign for Marvel United. Now, first of all, you see these amazing looking painted minis? <laughs> uh, so a guy named Vernon Piper, I worked with him. He painted these for me. He painted the entire set. I highly recommend if you want some painted minis, check him out. Uh, I will put a link in the description below if you want to contact him through Facebook. He did a phenomenal job. I love how they look and I can't wait to show them to you. The two heroes we're going to play for our first session is going to be Spider-Man. Look at that wall even. Even the wall looks awesome for Spider-Man. And we have Nick Fury himself. I love him in this game and of course I love him as a character and his mini is no exception. Our first mission will be going against the Black Dwarf. So how this works is we're going to play four total sessions in this video. We're going to play against three of Thanos' minions and then against Thanos himself. Not only do we need to defeat these minions, we also have to prevent them from getting or obtaining the Infinity Stones. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Now, normally we'd go through a full setup, but I do have a video already for setup. So I'm only going to show you the changes for doing the campaign. Let's go ahead and jump into that. The first thing to talk about is the villain deck itself. So you're going to set it up just like normal, except for there are a total of six infinity stones. You're going to grab three random cards and they're going to have the Thanos back on them. And you're going to slot them into the villain deck. You're going to place the first one after the first six cards, the next one after the 10th card and the final one at the bottom. If ever you get to that card, you're just simply going to reveal it and set it aside and draw the next card. And that means this uh, villain was able to obtain that Infinity Stone. And when we go against Thanos, he's going to have that in his deck. If ever in this campaign, the minions get all six of the Infinity Stones, we immediately lose. So we've got to prevent that from happening. Now, if we ever lose to this villain before all of these cards run out, that we just have to give Thanos all three of these um, Infinity Stone. Now we're not totally useless against Thanos either. We actually have power-up cards that we can earn throughout the three uh, fights against his minions. We have placed one randomly out. So this is the one that we're gonna have out on the board where if we use these symbols, so if I use a punch, a heroism, a movement, and I place a threat token on here, then we're going to obtain this benefit against Thanos when we fight him. If we can generate those three symbols, we'll also gain a wild against him. That's really cool. So each round, uh, or I should say, each of our times we're going against one of his minions, we're going to randomly grab one of those and place it over here. The other one, we're going to place underneath our mission cards here. And if we happen to complete all three missions, we also would gain this one. This power-up card denotes that if I generate two punches during one of my turns against Thanos, I also gain one heroism. And I should note that A, we can only use these against Thanos, and B, that uh, we don't have to spend these symbols for this. This just means we have to have at least these two symbols on our cards in order to generate that heroism. Cool Mini or not, of course, gave us this way overzealous uh, Infinity Stone hand. I love this. But if ever he gains a stone, we can even place them on here like so. I do really like that, especially my son does. We've played this campaign three times now. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Now, normally what you would do if you're playing this on your own, the uh, expansion for Thanos comes with specific locations and you can use those same locations for all three of the intro scenarios or scenarios against his uh, minions and then you'll use different ones for the boss fight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to use different locations from each of the box sets. So this first one is from the Spider-Verse. Then I'm going to go to Black Panther. Then we'll do Guardians of the Galaxy and then we'll use the Thanos specific locations for the final boss fight. Also, they recommend that you use the same heroes for all four missions. It makes it more like a campaign. But once again, I want to show you all of the heroes, not all of them, but more of the heroes, because that's really the fun part of this game. So each scenario, I'm going to use two different heroes. And yes, I am playing this as if it's a two-player game, not the solo variant. I don't feel like the solo variant works as well for the campaign. I do also want to mention I'm going to be playing on the normal mode, so that means we all will still have our one wild card in our deck. Our decks are size 11 instead of 10, which is nice. Uh, I'm doing that because I have never won against Thanos without doing that, and I'd like to at least get close in this playthrough. If we played on the expert mode, 
we would probably not even get there. <laughs> so that's why I'm, this way you can see more of the game. All right, let's check out the Black Dwarf. Here we have the Black Dwarf villain card. You can see over here, since we're playing two player, he'll have six health. When a hero is KO'd, the Black Dwarf doesn't activate his BAM. Instead, he plays another Master Plan card. Yeah, he's kind of brutal. His BAM is deal one damage to each hero in his location. And his overflow is if one or more of the civilians or the uh, thugs t can't be added to a location, deal one damage to each hero in that location. He does have some pretty annoying threat cards. Chain Hammer is one of them. As long as at least one Chain Hammer is in play, yeah, there are two of them, his BAM also deals one damage to each hero in adjacent locations. Ugh. He has two super tough threat cards. As long as at least one of these is in play, he, can, he will ignore the first damage he takes each turn. Of course, remember, at the beginning of the game, he's invulnerable until we complete two of those missions. His final two threat cards that are in play are Charge. Deal one damage to each hero in this location. That's only if he ends his movement in that location and he has the target symbol on his card. With this, let's go ahead and draw our starting hand. We each get to draw three cards. So Spider-Man will start with a move and a punch. He then also has just a move. And his final card will be a move and a heroism. Oh, nice. And we have for Nick Fury. Oh, I love these cards. And this is a wild. He has Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. A hero of your choice may immediately perform a two-move action. That's awesome. We have Nick Fury, just a single punch. And then this one, just his single wild. The villain starts off the game, so let's draw his first card. And we have, he's going to move four spaces clockwise, and then he's going to bam, which means we're going to take some damage. And then he's going to place two thugs out in his current location and one in each adjacent location. We'll place that card right here, starting the timeline of the game. I love this map, by the way, and how it works. It works really well. The Black Dwarf is going to move four spaces, one, two, three, four, just missing us. However, remember, he can hit adjacent until we get rid of those two uh, chain hammers. So we are in an adjacent location. We're each going to take a point of damage. Whenever you take damage in this game, you have to take a card from your hand and put it at the bottom of your deck. So Spider-Man's going to place this card and Nick Fury will place this one at the bottom of our decks. If ever our hand is empty, that's when we get KO'd. He'll then place out two thugs in this location, one here and one over in the Midtown High School. Fortunately for us, none of that will cause an overflow, so now it's our turn. And at the beginning, we get to decide who's going to go first. Let's start with Spider-Man. So the first thing you'll do on your turn is draw a card. Unless you're KO'd, then you'll heal up. Okay, and draw a total of four cards. We have, yeah, lots of options here. I think we're going to start off with this Move and Heroism card. So we're going to play this out onto the timeline. Remember that you can use any of the symbols in any order that you want. Part of what makes this game so awesome. What we are going to do is we're not going to move. Instead, we're going to use that move and place the move token here to denote that we have given up that symbol. We're trying to gain this power up looking long term. We can still use that heroism though. And with that heroism, I always say heroism, I am going to, because we're in the spot with the chain armor, I'm going to place one of the heroism tokens on here, hoping that soon we can get rid of this one. If he can't hit adjacent, it makes him not nearly as powerful. So I need to get rid of those chain hammers ASAP. Nick Fury will activate next. Remember that we get to activate three times before the villain will activate again. That's until we complete one of the mission cards. Once we do, they will accelerate to two. Let, uh, every two turns, they'll activate. We'll draw a card. Okay, we just have a basic uh, heroism. And you know what? Yeah, I think, I think I'm just going to use the basic heroism. So what we get to do is we get to use the symbols of the previous card played by our teammate. So currently, we have one move and one heroism, thanks to Spider-Man. We are then going to play this card into the timeline. That means we have a total of two heroism and a move that we can use. We'll use the two heroism so we can clear the chain hammer threat card. Now remember, there's two of these out, so it's, he's still going to hit adjacent for now. But that means we've taken care of one of his threat cards. And if we end our turn here, we can gain a heroism token. And as much as I want to use that move, I actually think I might not, just so that at the end of the turn, I can claim that heroism token. That would be super, super helpful. Since we were able to clear that threat, we'll place the threat token on this spot on the mission card. If we complete three more of those threats, we will clear this card, move these cards down, and then the villain will activate after every two hero cards. 
But if then we complete a second one, that's when we can actually start damaging the Black Dwarf. At the end of Nick Fury's turn, he's going to grab that one heroism token and keep it beside his cards. We'll now move back to Spider-Man's turn. After this, the Black Dwarf will go, and he draws great responsibility. So he only has a move here, but he will have a special effect. This states, rescue up to three civilians in your location. For each civilian rescued with this special effect, gain one punch token. Oh man, so we need to get him into a location that has a lot of civilians before he plays that one. The card Spider-Man's thinking of playing is actually this Move and Heroism card. Playing the card out onto the timeline gives him one move and two heroism symbols. Spider-Man is going to move into the same space as the Black Dwarf, this tower, and then he's going to spend two heroism, and he's going to place both on that chain hammer card. We've got another chain hammer. They happen to be right next to each other. If we can get rid of this one, it's going to severely reduce the damage Black Dwarf does to us. Well, we've had our little fun. Now it's the Black Dwarf's time to have some fun. He is going to move two spaces. Oh, that means he's not going to hit anybody. He will bam. And if his spot that he lands has the target symbol, it does not. Where he's going to land is going to be this super tough card. So that will not have an effect. But then he'll drop out some thugs as follows. He'll move right over to the Brooklyn Bridge. One, two. Won't do anything here except for drop some thugs. Two in this location one on this side and one over here so we're definitely filling up at some locations but we're still doing okay it's now back to nick fury's turn thanks to spider-man we already have a move and a heroism we can use and we will draw just a basic movement nick fury is just going to play his one wild card so that means he has a movement a heroism and a wild and he could potentially use this token if he'd like Nick will also move to that tower, and with that third heroism, we're going to take care of the chain hammer. <laughs> second threat done. We'll place that second threat token in this spot. We also had that wild symbol, so we can use it as one of anything. We're going to go ahead and punch one of these thugs. That will place one on the defeated thugs mission. We only need to defeat eight more thugs. Now, at the end of our turn, we're going to stay in that location. And yeah, Nick Fury is just getting all ready. He's going to gain a move token because he ended at the Oscorp Tower. We're back to Spider-Man's turn. Let's draw his card. And he has great power. Oh, I love his cards. Great power. Great responsibility. This one gives him three punches. For each thug defeated in this with this special effect, gain one heroism token. <laughs> and you know what? I think I might have just the idea. We're going to play this card. We're going to play this because we do have Nick Fury's Wild. So we can move up to two spaces with this card. We'll take that movement of two, jumping between buildings, getting over here to the Brooklyn Bridge. And then with the three punches, we'll take out one, two, three more of those thugs. That means we'll gain not one, not two, but three heroism tokens. Which to me just seems like it makes sense to use all three of those. And we're going to get rid of the specific threat card we have here, Super Tough. As long as at least one super tough is in play, he ignores the damage. So that is gone now. This will be the third threat that has been completed. And we now have four thugs defeated. Five more to go. And that mission is complete. Our end of turn effect at the Brooklyn Bridge is we can add one civilian to any location, then rescue a civilian from this location. Yeah, why the heck not? So let's rescue this one. That'll be our first one. We have to place one of these at a different location. Let's put it at the Motown High School. Nick Fury will be next to go. He's going to draw a two heroism card. Ooh, I might have an idea. I think let's play this card, gaining two heroism. And then we'll also gain the one move from this card. We do not get the special effect, just the symbols. So we have one move and two heroism. Our one move will be to jump over to the Daily Bugle. Parker! <laughs> I love how it says it on there. We're going to place two heroism onto the charge. And I do have a third heroism. I could use it to complete that mission. But if I do that, then the Black Dwarf is going to accelerate. I think I want to get closer to completing two missions before I do that. So I'm going to hold for now. Now it's going to be the Black Dwarf's turn. This is his third card, three more, and he is going to find his first Infinity Stone. We have Axe Swing. He's not going to move. Great. Oh, man. Deal one damage to each hero in the Black Dwarf and adjacent locations. 
Spider-Man sitting there right with the Black Dwarf, and Nick Fury just moved adjacent to him. That means we're both going to take damage. Now, he does not bam, thank goodness, so that won't happen. We're each going to place at the bottom of our decks these cards, Nick Fury just a move, and Spider-Man the Great Responsibility card, because he really doesn't want to deal with responsibility right now, so that's why. <laughs> That does mean, though, for Spider-Man's turn, he only has one card in hand. However, he will get to draw. Oh, he gets to gain two movement tokens if he does the web sling. Whoa, that's kind of cool. For this turn, let's just use our move and punch card. That means we have a move, punch, and two heroism. Spider-Man's going to move into this location, punch this thug. That will be our fifth thug. Then with the two heroism, we'll save one civilian. That's our second one. And we're going to complete that threat card. This was a charge card. He didn't ever land there when we were there, so it was okay. But that is now taken care of. That is our fourth threat handled. Instead of placing that on our mission card and then accelerating the Black Dwarf, we're actually going to place this here on our power-up. Now all we need is a punch and a heroism, and then we will, during the final battle, if we can gain these symbols on the bottom parts of our cards, not the special abilities of our cards, but at the bottom parts of our cards, we have these symbols, we'll also gain a wild against Thanos. Looking at the end of turn effect of our revealed location, we have revealed the top card of the master plan deck. You may place it on the bottom. We're definitely not going to place it on the bottom. It's going to accelerate him finding those um, infinity stones. But let's go ahead and check out this card. This is a move three, and then he's going to deal damage in that location. Actually, he's not going to bam, so he's not going to deal damage. He's just going to place out civilians. That's actually not terrible. Moving three, one, two, three is going to put him over here. He wouldn't be able to place a civilian here, but he would just deal damage to heroes in that location. So let's just not end our location there. We can put civilians out in the other, lo uh, other spots. So that's going to give us some time. We just know we don't want to end our turn over here. We're going to go back to Nick Fury's turn now. Nick will start his turn by drawing a card, and he has a move and a heroism, plus he has the move and heroism token. Oh, so many options. I think for this turn, we're going to play the Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. A hero of your choice immediately performs up to two movement, uh, and we get a wild for this. Plus, we have Spider-Man's move and punch. Boy, they are working well together. We're also going to use our heroism token and place it here. We did get a punch from uh, Spider-Man, so we're going to use it to complete this power-up. We're now going to have this ability during the end game against Thanos. Nice. Spider-Man gets the out of turn two movement. He's going to move one, two, and then Nick Fury will use the move from Spider-Man to move here. He does not have a punch left. He has a wild left. And he's going to go ahead and punch this thug. That is our sixth thug. We need three more to complete that mission. At the end of his turn, he's going to gain another movement token. He now has two move tokens. Spider-Man's turn. We will draw a card and he gets a double punch. Okay, and he has a wild from Nick Fury. Let's go ahead and play the double punch card. And the best part about this game is you can activate these symbols in any order because we will take out this thug. That's our seventh out of the ninth one we need. We'll then move to the Osborne Laboratories and then we'll use our next punch to take out this thug. That means we only need one more thug and one more threat and we can hit the Black Dwarf. Of course, we know what the Black Dwarf is going to do. Move three and then place out some civilians. He'll move one two, three. He can't place a civilian in that location, so that would mean we deal a point of damage to every hero there. There's no heroes there. And then we'll place a civilian over here, and then one at the Oscorp Towers. Nick Fury has two punches from Spider-Man. Let's see what he... Oh my gosh, so much movement. Well, for my plan, I think I'm definitely going to play this one with the heroism. For one of the two punches, we have a thug left here. Let's take him out. By doing that, though, we have completed a mission, so let's remove that mission card. This means with that mission complete, all other missions will slide down, and now the villain is going to activate after every two hero cards. And remember, even if we had completed this card with our threats, we wouldn't get this power-up unless all three of these missions are complete. I'm then going to use one of our movement tokens that we have, so I can move a total of two, because our card had one movement on it, and we'll use the second one as that token, one two to move here then we have one heroism that we can use and we're going to drop that down onto this super tough threat card if we even want to think about dealing six damage to the black dwarf we're going to have to get rid of this card otherwise every time we hit him he ignores one of the damages that we do okay now it's to spider-man but then after spider-man the black dwarf is going to go again 
let's see what Spider-Man can pull off. He draws a wild. That might actually work. We're going to play the wild because that's going to give us two heroism, which will mean we can hit the Black Dwarf. Absolutely. And that's because Nick Fury gives one heroism with this card. With that two heroism, there's no longer a super tough. And if we end our turn here, we can gain a punch token. So I'm not going to use that move because I need six damage and I'm a little worried I'm not going to get it. So that's uh, one of the tokens that we can use to maybe punch the Black Dwarf. And that's also going to be our fourth threat token. We'll place that token here and then remove that mission card. After we remove the mission card, we slide all other missions down. So if we can somehow save seven more civilians, we could get this power up. I'm just not thinking that's going to happen. <laughs> What's the Black Dwarf going to do this time? He is going to move three and not bam. Healing factor. Black Dwarf heals up to three health up to his starting value. Well, he's already at his starting value. If he's at full health, deal one damage to each hero in his location instead. He won't get to us. Yes! It does seem like he knows we're on to him, though, because he's going to run away. One, two, three. All the way over here. But I think we might still be able to get to him, especially with Nick Fury and his move tokens. Let's draw our top card, and we do get a punch. We have one move here. I could use the wild from Spider-Man to get me the two move to be in his location, but then I can't punch him. So instead, I think I am going to use my move token plus the wild from Spider-Man to move two spaces, and I'll wallop him for one point of damage. We'll move two spaces, one, two, hit him for one point of damage. He's down to five. Now it's Spider-Man's turn. We do have that one punch token, which is nice. Let's flip this. Oh, two heroism. We could save some more civilians. That's not going to help us take him out. I think, yeah, let's use Spider-Man here. We're going to gain two move tokens, and then we'll also gain a move. The two move tokens, though, will be really nice to be able to hit him next time if he tries to move around. Spider-Man will jump across town, landing in Queens. He'll then spend one of those two uh, move tokens that he earned from the web slinging, and he's going to web sling himself to the Brooklyn Bridge. He'll deal one damage, knocking the Black Dwarf down to four health, and then he'll use that punch token that he earned to knock him down to three health. The Black Dwarf is next to go. Is he going to move away? And you can see here, the next card he's going to earn is going to be one of the Infinity Stones. He's going to move one location and bam, that's not going to hit any of us, and just put out some thugs. He'll jump away from us, moving to here, putting two thugs in Queens, one in the Brooklyn Bridge, and one over at the Laboratories. He also would deal a damage to each hero in this location because he ended his turn here and had that target symbol on his card, but no one's there, so we're all right. Now we're moving to Nick Fury's turn. He has one movement from Spider-Man. Let's see what we get. We get Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. A hero of your choice immediately performs two punches. Uh, I mean, uh, hero of your choice. No, we can't. We could pick ourselves, but we're not in the right space, and it's immediately when we play it. But that gives us a wild... We could hit the Black Dwarf for one damage that put him down to two. And then, you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to play this. Yeah, yeah, we're going to play this. I think if we do this, this might work. It depends upon what Spider-Man draws. But we're going to play this. We're going to immediately perform a, a punch and just get rid of one of the thugs in our location. That's fine. But we do have one wild and one move. The one move is going to allow us to jump to Queens. The one wild will deal a point of damage to the dwarf, uh, the black dwarf. He's down to two health. Spider-Man will have a wild from Nick Fury. He could use that as a punch. I don't know. Can we do two damage? It's, it's going to be... We'll see. If he can't do the final two damage, we could use our heroism here to start uh, saving some of those civilians and maybe get that final mission. But he did get a punch. This might work. Yeah, this is going to work. We're not going to allow him to gain a single Infinity Stone, you guys, as long as I did this right. I'm going to use this as a move. Then I've got one punch here, and I've got a wild here that's considered a punch. That's two punches. Spider-Man leaps across the Brooklyn Bridge over to Queens, deals the two damage, and takes out the Black Dwarf. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and if I did that wrong, sorry, but I think that's pretty awesome. And he literally would have found the Infinity Stone there. Let's see what Infinity Stone he would have found. During the actual Thanos fight, Thanos would gain 6 health with the Soul Stone. 
Oh my gosh. So he does not get that. He didn't get the other two either, but this is the one that literally I took that chance because if I had kept that director's shield card and gotten Spider-Man in the right spot or Nick Fury, we could have dealt two damage to him that way. But yeah, that worked out. That, my friends, was mission one of our campaign. Let's go to mission two where we're going to go to the rise of the Black Panther. We're now ready to start mission two. We are in the Black Panther universe taking on Ebony Ma. Let's take a look at his card. He's going to have a total of four health. His special rules are heroes with any crisis tokens must play their hero cards randomly on their turn. And then they discard one crisis token. Ouch. His BAM is deal one damage and give one crisis token to each hero in his location. And his overflow is if one or more of these locations uh, cannot take a thug or a civilian, uh, then each hero in that location gets one crisis token. He has two persuasion threat cards. This is only if he lands in this location. Each hero in this location takes a crisis token. If there are no heroes in this location, play another master plan card after resolving the current one. Yeah, he's likely going to find an infinity stone, I'm just saying. He has two telekinesis threat cards. If he lands there, deal one damage to each hero in this and in each adjacent location. His final two threat cards are debilitating torture. Heroes starting their turns in these locations do not get actions from the previous hero card in the storyline. We have his villain deck here. After six of his cards, we have one infinity stone. After four more, another infinity stone and a third at the bottom. We have the power up on the side of the board where if we can spend four heroism, we can gain this card where if we generate two move symbols, we'll get a heroism during the Thanos fight. Also, if we complete all three of these missions, we can gain this card. This will give us, if we have two punches, an additional move. Here we have the Ebony Ma villain mini. Oh, he looks awesome. Uh, yeah, never liked him in the, in the movies at all. He is scary. We're going to be playing with Black Panther as one of the heroes for this mission. This Actually, he's one of my favorites. He's very simple. Uh, my son can play him really well, and you'll see why. Because his special cards just give him more symbols, and so that's really nice for uh, a five or six-year-old. And then our second hero is going to be Okoye, because she looks awesome. We are once again playing on normal, so we do have that single wild in our deck. Okoy will draw one, two... Ooh, what is that? Until the beginning of your next turn, if another hero in your location takes damage, you can take it instead. And then our third one will be just a straight move. Black Panther will draw his first one, just one punch. His second one, a move and a punch. And his third one, a move and a punch. With this, we're ready to begin. Let's draw Ebony Ma's first card. Then he has, oh, he's not going to move. Uh, he's not going to bam, which is actually nice. Uh, Genius Intellect. Immediately play a number of additional master plan cards equal to the total number of crisis tokens the heroes have. Ha! We have zero. What a way to start. So he's actually not going to do anything. He's just going to sit there and look pretty. Let's start off with Okoy then. We'll draw her card to start her turn. She has another move and a punch. So it's two of those. I think, though, the first thing we're going to do is play her uh, the Dora Milaje. Although we're not really getting the benefit of the ability, the two heroism is just too hard to pass up on. So we're going to place this into the timeline. I always find getting rid of those threat cards, it's such a double benefit. It's so good to get rid of them as soon as we can. So we're going to place both heroism here on Persuasion. Black Panther is next to go. He'll go ahead and draw a card. Oh, he's got another move and a heroism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to use the move and the heroism right now. This means we have a total of three heroism. We're going to spend one here, and that's going to clear that persuasion threat card. That'll be the first out of the four threats we need to complete in order to complete that mission. As much as I'd love to stay in my location, because look at end of turn, I could gain a wild token if I stay there. However, getting rid of that debilitating torture is super important. So I am going to use my move to move here, and I still have two more heroism thanks to Okoy. So I'm going to use both of those on this debilitating torture. That's going to place two more heroism here. And what's nice is our Black Panther has already given Okoy a move and a heroism, so she'll be able to complete that because that's good because if she doesn't, if we started in that location, we wouldn't be able to use the prior card symbols and we don't want to deal with that. So yeah, that is going to end our Black Panther's turn. Let's move back to Okoy. We'll draw our card and we have, what is that? Two punches in an adjacent location and a regular punch. Ooh. 
the question is with that vibranium spear, do we want to keep that for Ebony Ma or do we want to use it now? Ugh. Yeah, let's use it now. It's it's just fun. Let's use it now. This will mean we'll have a move, a heroism, a punch, and then two punches we can do in an adjacent location. We'll start with the two punches in an adjacent location. Let's take out these two thugs. We only need seven more, and we've completed that mission. We can then use the punch that we have on our card to take out this thug. So that's three down already. We'll then use the move over here, and we'll complete the debilitating torture. That'll be our second threat already cleared. Looking at the Warrior Falls location, our end of turn is we may do a punch in this location. Unfortunately, there's nothing to punch. I think the only thing here yeah, is a civilian. Let's not punch a civilian. Overall, I'd say a good start. Let's reveal Ebony Ma's next one. Move clockwise to the next location with the most heroes. Great. Manipulation. Each hero in Ebony Ma's location will take a crisis token. We're both in the same spot. So that means we're each going to take a crisis uh, token. That means we're each going to randomly play our next card. At least he doesn't bam, but he is going to fly himself right here, and we've each taken that crisis token. Now we'll move to Black Panther. We've got our three cards here. Let's draw our fourth one. We're then going to discard that crisis token. I'm going to flip these around, mess them up. This could be really bad. If we don't get a move, we could be wasting a lot of symbols. So let's see. Oh, we did get a move. We got a move and a punch. That actually is not good because <laughs> we're not going to be able to use either of those punches. So I'm just going to move. Bummer. Well, I'm getting a little manipulated by Ebony Ma, and I'm just going to jump myself over here and punch nothing. But at the end of my turn, I do at least gain one wild token. Hopefully that'll help us mitigate some of his randomness. Okay, next to go is Okoy. I have her three cards in hand. We'll draw the fourth one. That's her fourth card. I really need, uh, maybe an, if I got another move, uh, let's see. Let's see what I get. I get a move and a punch. That actually means I have two moves and two punches. Maybe this will work. Well, this isn't great, but there's not a lot of thugs out on the board, and that's what I can use to punch. So I think I might just move one, two with Okoy, and punch this thug. That's our fourth one. But yeah, there's only one more thug out on the board right now. <laughs> okay, we also will discard our crisis tokens. So now we no longer have any crisis tokens. We will have the Black Panther go. We'll draw our fourth card, and we have, ooh, the Panther Habit. And yeah, there's lots of these, or I should say that's his three special ability cards. He will only give one punch to Okoy, but for his turn, he'd also gain a move and a heroism. I think the card I'm going to play is this double heroism card. I'm foregoing one punch, but what I can do is move to this location, use two heroism for this, and then I think I'm going to use my wild as a third one to complete this threat. That is threat number three. However, I'm not, I don't even have enough of these thugs on the board to do to complete that mission, so it's going to be interesting about getting the second mission done. Now, at the end of my turn, I can discard one card from my hand to the bottom of my deck to remove one crisis token anywhere on the board or anywhere at all. Right now, we don't have any crisis tokens, so no worries about that. Ebony is next to go. Let's flip his card. Are you serious? He's going to move two. And he's going to hit both of us with a bam, which means we're both going to get a crisis token. And he's going to place out these civilians. That means he's going to move right where we are, deal us each a damage, give us each a crisis token, which I'll give that to each of us. And now we have even more uses for heroism and not enough in our hands. <laughs> what cards are we going to discard? Black Panther will lose the punch card and Okoy will lose the move card. They'll go to the bottom of our decks. Now we're going to move to Okoy's turn and we'll discard that crisis token we just got. We'll draw our next card. Oh, double punches. I better not play the double punch card. Oh, please don't play the double punch card. What are we going to play? Oh, the single heroism. That means we have a total of three heroism. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? All we can do with that is save these two civilians. Oh, you know what I can do? That third heroism. Oh, do I want... You know what? Actually, let's leave these two civilians here. I'm going to do something else with that three heroism. Those power-up cards can be super powerful. So let's use all three here. <laughs> I might be thinking too long term, but sometimes that's what you need to do. I'm then going to use the Great Mound's ability and discard this card to the bottom of my deck for Okoy so I can discard this one Crisis token on the Black Panther so he doesn't have to randomly play a card. 
It's now the Black Panther's turn. I'm going to draw a card. I have a single move. Uh, I think. So I've got a heroism from Okoy. I'm going to play the Black Panther. So I can get one move. I can get one heroism and one punch. I'll use the move to move to the Golden City. I will spend the punch to take out our fifth thug. We only need four more. And then I have two heroism. I think I'm going to drop both down onto Persuasion. Now it's Okoy's turn. Let's flip her next card. She has Accomplished Strategist. Reveal the top card of your deck. You may put it at the bottom of your deck. And yeah, I think we have to play that. I don't want to use a move and a punch. I have no place to punch. I have no more thugs on the board. This would give us the wild that we need to complete Persuasion. But I'm still going to... Oh wait, no, I have to move in order to do that. And I don't have a move symbol. It is what it is, I guess. We're just going to have to play this. All we have then is a punch and a move. And the punch is totally useless. Ugh. So I will play that. I will look at the top card of my deck. It's just a punch. Definitely putting that on the bottom of my deck. And for the wild, I think I'm actually going to move over to this location. That's because at the end of my turn, I can gain a wild token. I will take that. Ebony's next card, he's going to activate. He's going to move four, bam, and throw some thugs out on the board. Moving four means he just misses our heroes. One, two, three, four. He's going to go here. He would bam. No one's in that location. Then he's going to place two thugs here, one here, and one there, and he can do that. And that's actually super nice for us because we now have some thugs we can kill. Moving to Black Panther's turn now. We'll draw his next card. He's got the Panther habit again. This time he could give a heroism. Yeah, we're definitely going to play that one. We have a wild that we're going to be working with. So we have four symbols we can use. We'll use the one heroism that we've gotten to complete the persuasion threat card. That's going to be the fourth card now that we have completed. That means we've completed a mission. That's good and not good, but overall I'm okay with it. It does mean though he's now going to activate every two times. There's at least some thugs on the board so we can work on that quickly. Now we're going to use that movement to move here and then the wild to move here. And then we'll use that one punch to take out the one thug that's in the village. And that means we only need three more thugs before we've completed that one. Also at the end of our turn, because we're at that location, we're going to gain a wild token as well. We each have a wild token now. I see three more thugs out on the board. That's exactly what we need. So Okoye is going to go next. Oh, she's got her wild Oh, what we, uh, no, we've got to do the move and the punch, I think. Yeah, we're going to do the move and the punch. And don't forget, we have the one heroism here. Let's move to the Warrior Falls for our move. And then our punch, we're going to take out one of those thugs. We do have one heroism. Let's save one civilian just because we can. <laughs> That's our first one. We need, what, eight more in order to complete that objective. Uh, but then at the end of our turn, we may punch in this location. That means we can punch this thug. We only need one more thug. Uh, but now Ebony Ma is going to activate because he's going to activate every two of our turns. Let's see what he is going to do to us. He's going to move one and bam. Oh no, he's going to hit Black Panther. And not only is he going to hit Black Panther, he's also going to place out a lot more civilians. He's going to move to the Jabari village. He's going to hit Black Panther for one damage. Black Panther is going to have to take this one card, put it at the bottom of his deck, and he's going to gain a single crisis token, which means he's randomly playing his card next time. He's then going to place out one civilian here and two in each adjacent location. Moving to Black Panther's turn, he will discard that one crisis token. He'll draw his one card. Oh, he's got a double move and a move and a punch. We'll just shuffle these up. Yeah, he only has one card in his hand after he plays one. He's going to play the move and the punch card. And you know what? That might actually work. We're going to move two because we got two movement. And then we're going to use the punch to take out this final thug. That means we've completed this mission. Awesome. That means he's now vulnerable to damage. We are rocking it. Now, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I don't want to forget about it. And I've used so much heroism. I think I'm also going to use the wild token that we have here and spend it so that we have gained this power up as well. I definitely want this power up. So now for our final game against Thanos, we will have both of these power ups. If we can get these symbols, we'll gain these additional symbols as well. Okoy is next to go. Let's draw a card. Can we take him out? Oh, I don't think we can. He's got four health. We have a move and a punch. 
so we can deal him one point of damage. The most we can do is two. Do we want to use the wild to give more... Yeah, yeah, let's use the wild. We're going to use the wild so that that way Black Panther has more flexibility for his turn. So I'm going to play the wild. That means we'll punch him twice and move there. That's actually not bad. We can move to here. We'll deal him two out of the four damage that we need to do. And then at the end of our turn, we're going to gain our second wild token. That should hopefully help us be able to take him out the next time we activate. Now it's Ebony Ma's turn. He's going to flip his card and he has move clockwise to the next location with the most heroes. Okay, that's going to be where Black Panther is. Each hero in his location will take a crisis token. So that means Black Panther will have a crisis token. And once again, this is his sixth card. So the next card he has is going to be an Infinity Stone. If our Black Panther can take him out, he only has two health. <laughs> then we can win the game before he steals that infinity stone however black panther has a crisis token so he only has one card in hand he's going to draw another card and he's going to have to shuffle these up and randomly do one of them let's pick this one oh, we get the two moves so we have a two move and a wild and I think we all know what we're going to do with the wild is one punch. We're going to take out that point of damage and the two move. We're simply going to move over here so we can get one wild token. Thank you, Jabari Village. And with Okoy here, we'll draw a card and I think we should have no problem winning. We have two move right now. I have two wilds. I can actually take them out with what I have. I can just play this move card. It doesn't even matter. We have up to three movement, but we just need to move two right to here. We then can use our two wilds that we have here for two punches. Well, we only needed to do one and he is gone. You know what that means? No infinity stone for Thanos at all. This is insane. That next card was the reality stone. This one, we would have to put all completed mission cards back into play if we had revealed this. That could be bad. It could be actually not be terrible if you draw that right at the beginning and it's kind of random. But still, to not have that in his deck, and we only have one more minion to get through. Not to mention, we have now two power-up cards. I am not going to complain. This campaign is going quite well. Of course, that's generally how it goes. You take out the minions, then you meet Thanos, and you die. And you'll see why when we uh, have to activate him. <laughs> All right, now let's go to the Guardian of the Galaxy-verse. Here we have Mission 3, Proxima Midnight. We're going to be playing Star-Lord and Gamora, just because why not? <laughs> We're playing in the Galaxy of the Guardians universe, so I thought it was pretty fitting. Proxima Midnight will have a total of 4 health. She has a BAM effect, deal 1 damage to each hero in her location, discard all civilians from her location, and, and increase the slaughter track by 1, plus the number of civilians discarded. She has an overflow. If one or more uh, of the thug tokens can't be added to a location, deal one damage to each hero in her location. And then if a civilian token can't be added to a location, increase the slaughter track by one for each of those that you can't add. If ever she gets all the way up to 12, we lose. Just like the other two minions, she has three different types of threat cards. So two tactical support cards. Heroes in these locations suffer one extra damage whenever they take damage. Her next two are Masterful Fighter. While in this location, she ignores the first punch used against her each turn. And then her final one, the Prisoner Camp. Each civilian in that location requires one extra heroism to be rescued. Here we have her mini looking awesome. I love the gold and her blue hair with a tinge of purple. That's awesome. And then we have Star Lord here with his two guns. I love how he looks. Look at his eyes. So cool. And of course, we have Gamora as well. Look at those eyes as well and the green hair. Just like before, we have six villain cards, then we have one of the stones, four more villain cards, a stone, two more villain cards, and the final stone that she's searching for. Let's see if we can actually go to Thanos without a single stone found. I have never done that in a campaign. It all hinges on Gamora and Star-Lord. Oh boy, I don't know if I'd want that. Maybe I would? <laughs> okay, Gamora will have a punch and a heroism. Wow, that's kind of cool. Uh, her second one is a punch. And her third card will be, ooh, Deadliest in the Galaxy. We'll probably hold on to this. Each wild or punch token you spend this turn, you uh, get an additional punch action. And that's a move when she plays it. 
Star-Lord, let's look at his three. We have Problem Solver. Give one of these tokens from the pool to another hero, and it's a wild. Yeah, you see, that's why these two work together, which I thought would be fun. A move and a punch for his second. And his third one is just a regular punch. Now let's go ahead and reveal the top card of the villain deck. We have a zero move. Okay, so she's not going to move. She's just going to, bam, place out one civilian here and two in each adjacent location. There are no heroes in this location, so that Bam is just going to discard this one civilian. That's going to push her up on her slaughter track by one. She only needs to get to 12 and we lose. I, th I always feel like she's one of the hardest ones. She's then going to place one in her location and two in each adjacent location for civilians. And that should be it for her, but I do realize I didn't show you my power-up card. So if I choose to gain this power-up card, I have to use four punches. I could then gain, uh, if I use two move, I can get a free punch against Thanos. I also have, if I complete three missions, which has never happened, two heroism would give me one punch. Now the question becomes, who do we want to have to start this final mission before we fight Thanos? We'll start off the game with Star-Lord. Let's draw his next card. Okay, he's got two of these problem solvers. I think that just means we're going to play this. So what we can do is give a punch, a heroism, or a move token from the pool to another hero. We're definitely going to give a punch to Gamora. So we'll give a punch to Gamora with this, and we get one wild symbol. In case you can't tell, I'm always about removing those threats first. So we're going to place one heroism here with that wild. Gamora will go next. We'll draw her fourth card, a single move. Ugh. I think, yeah. Let's use this one. This is going to give us another heroism and a punch. We'll use that wild symbol as a heroism so we can get rid of this prison camp. That will place the two heroism at this spot. We'll also remove this and place it on our clear threats card. Since we've ended our turn at this location, we also can gain one wild token. So now we have a wild token and we have a punch token. That's awesome. I almost forgot we had that punch symbol. We should be able to get rid of this thug as well. That's our first one. We need eight more. Now we're back to Star-Lord's turn. We'll draw a card with a double move. I think we're going to play the problem solver again. This time, though, we're going to give a heroism token to Gamora. Gamora now has one of each token type except for a move, but we are going to gain a wild, and then we have a punch and a heroism from the Gamora card. This is a little risky because we could take more damage moving into this tactical support spot, but we're going to move there with our wild. Then with the heroism, we'll place one on the tactical support and the one punch will take out our second thug. Now it's going to be Proxima Midnight's turn. We'll flip her first card and she has moving two and bamming and dropping out some more thugs. This actually kind of stinks. She's going to move one, two. She is then going to bam, discarding both of these civilians. That's going to push up her track of the um, slaughter track here to three. Remember, we lose on 12. Then she's going to bam. She deal damage. She can't. So instead, she's going to place out two thugs in this location one thug in the location over here and then one over here but she can't so if one or more of the thug tokens can't be added to a location deal one damage to each er hero in proxima midnight's location well we can't do that so at least that's good but we have placed out all of our thugs all right now it is going to be back to gamora's turn she'll draw her card up she has a wild okay what do we want to do I think what we're going to do this turn is just play our Gamora card here for one movement and use our one heroism. This will allow us to do a move to here. We then will use one wild as the heroism and then the heroism token to complete the tactical support threat here. And then now we have here, you may discard one action token to draw a card. Now, I don't think I'm going to do that, but we can do that if we want at the Collector's Museum. We also have gained our second threat token. We're now back to Star-Lord's turn. He's going to draw a card and he also gets a wild. So he has one movement from Gamora. What do we want to do? We don't have anything that we can punch. And all we've got is punching and moving. I could do a ton of moving. I could also use some punches for our power-up card. Oh, that is somewhat tempting. 
let's just go ahead and play the single punch card. So we have one move and one punch. And the only thing we're going to do with that punch is we're going to place it onto our power up. So our power up card will now have one punch token on it. I need three more to be able to complete it so we can have this against Thanos. I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not, but with that one move, I'm actually thinking of moving over here just so I can gain that one wild token. Gamora is next. She's going to draw a card. She has a move and a punch. All of the punches, none of the heroism. <laughs> I think I'm just going to say what the heck with the Star-Lord card here. We're going to play this one for two more punches, and we're just going to fill this power-up card so it's one punch away from being full, so we'll place two more on it. We only need one more. I kind of feel like I'm just wasting time, but I've not been drawing what I want. Okay, we're going to have Proxima Midnight move five locations. Oh boy, she's putting a lot out on the board. Well, this isn't going to be great. She's going to kill us yet. We know I was feeling so good against Thanos, but she might be able to collect all three of them herself. She's going to move five. She's going to move all the way to here. She is not going to ban. That's all she's going to do, but she's going to try and place two civilians in that location. She can't. That means she auto kills them. One, two. We're already at five for the slaughter track. She has one thug that she's trying to place. She can't because of overflow. That would deal damage in her location, but that doesn't matter. She's then going to place one thug and one civilian here and one thug and one civilian here. So it's looking like to me, we now have some good uses for our punches. We need to get rid of some thugs, I think. Star-Lord has one punch from Gamora, and finally we get some heroism. Uh, but now, oh, are we in a good spot for that? No, we can't move. Oh, I have a wild I could move with. No, I think this round, we're going to just do the move and punch. So we actually have a move and two punches for this turn. We'll move into this location and punch two of these thugs. That puts us up to four. We need five more. Gamora will then draw her fourth card and she gets a single heroism. I think I'm going to use my move and punch. So that means I can do two movements and two punches. Gamora will race herself one, two over here and punch both of these thugs. That's going to put her up to six. So she only has three remaining. Star-Lord's going to activate one more time before Proxima Midnight. He gets a move and a heroism. And I think I'm going to play the two heroism card this time with also playing my wild as a heroism. So three total heroism for Star-Lord. Plus he's got a move and a punch from this card. The two heroism and that wild token will take care of this prison camp, Sayonara. We now have three out of the four missions completed to complete that, or I should say threats completed to complete that mission. We then have one move and a punch. And it's hard for me to say no to moving here and punching this thug. We need two more thugs and one more threat, and then we can hit Proxima Midnight. The question becomes, what is she going to do? She's going to move to the location with the most civilians. Yeah, that's the one that she's at. It has three. Discard all civilians in her location and increase her track by the number of civilians discarded. Heroes in her location may take one damage for each civilian they want to keep in that location. Like I said, she's probably going to kill us just from slaughtering too many civilians. I can't stop her from doing this. I have no heroes in her location. She's going to increase this by three. One, two, three. She's at eight. If she gets to 12, we lose. And she finds all three of the Infinity Stones. Gamora is next to go. She'll go ahead and draw a card. Okay, what do we want to do here? Gamora, I think, is going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to play this one here. This is going to allow us to move. We get two heroism from the Star Lord's last card, but each of our wilds or our fist tokens you spend this turn gets you an additional fist action or punch action. I'm going to spend two of these here. So that's going to give me two more punch tokens. This is going to be awesome. Look at all of this that we're doing. The first thing we're going to do is spend two of our heroism to place it on the masterful fighter. Then we'll use that wild token that we're using that's going to generate one of those punches to complete this threat. When we complete this threat, that means we have now completed th uh, a total of four threats. So that means we have one mission down. We'll then slide this mission 
over. We're definitely not done yet because now what we can do is use the move that's on this card to move into Proxima Midnight's location. Doing this is going to allow us to attack with our punches that we are going to spend. We're going to spend a punch token, which is going to give us another punch token. So we have a total of three punch tokens. Now I wish, this is what I'm planning, two of the punch tokens, we're going to take out these two thugs. That will complete this defeat thugs mission. Now she is vulnerable to damage. We have one punch token left. We could deal her one of the four damage, but she's a masterful fighter. While she's in this location, she ignores the first punch used against her each turn. So we're not going to be able to punch her. Oh, well we do, but she blocks it. We'll then move to Star Lord's turn. He's going to draw a card. Oh, he has his, uh, what is that? Uh, the problem solver. That's actually a great card. You know what? I think we're going to play this. We only have one move, and I'm actually going to forfeit it, I think. We're going to use that wild. I really want to be able to finish this power-up. So we're going to use that wild that's on that power-up, or I'm sorry, on that card to finish the power-up so we have this ability against Thanos next game. That means when we generate two movement, we'll also generate a punch and a heroism. And if we can do one punch, one move, and one heroism, we'll also gain a wild. <laughs> That's epic. We're going to give Gamora a punch token. Yeah, because we want her to be able to punch like nobody's business. And we're not even going to move. We're just going to stay where we are. I'm staying there because that location will give us one wild token. So we now have a wild token in our possession. Proxima will go next. She is going to flip. She's going to run away, moving four spaces, bamming, and placing out some thugs. She's going to run away from Gamora. Can't really blame her. One, two, three, four. She would place out thugs. She can't place the one in here, but she can place the two here and two there. And with that, we'll move to Gamora's turn. And what am I saying? Proxima Midnight is almost going to win the game right here. She, with that bam, will kill both of these civilians. That means we're going to move up the slaughter track too. And I might have missed this before. I'll make sure to make a note. But it's plus one on top of the civilians that she kills with her bam. So she's going to increase her slaughter track by three. She's going to sneak up from the eight. One, two, three, to eleven. If she gets one more slaughter, we lose. Gamora really needs to find a way to be able to move two spaces. Let's see if she can do it. No, oh, that's two punches. That's not going to allow her to move two spaces. She could use this wild to move one, and then she can use the Star Lord card here as a wild to move two, and then use the punch that she has here to deal one damage. Is that worth it? I don't know. You know what? We're going to play this. And we're going to hedge our bets instead. We're going to move one and then two and come over here to the same space that Star-Lord is at so we can gain a wild token. Maybe we can use that next turn if we get a next turn. Okay, now it's Star-Lord's turn. He has a wild he can play with. He will draw. Come on, give us a move and a punch. Move and a punch. Oh, it's a move and a heroism. Okay, so we have a wild. We have a two move that can move us into her spot. We have a wild from Gamora and we have a wild here. That could deal two damage. Ah, that's not enough. We need to deal four, but I don't see anything else that we can do. So we're going to spend the two that we have here for the two movement plus the wild here for one punch. And this is going to be the punch that we have to deal two damage out of the four to Proxima Midnight. We come flying in, guns blazing, attacking her from behind, dealing her two damage. Unfortunately, she's going to activate next. She's going to flip her card, and we have zero movement. Discard all civilians in both adjacent locations and increase the slaughter track by the number of civilians discarded. Heroes in those locations can take one damage to prevent it. We can't do it. There are no civilians in this location, but there are two over here. If there was just one, we would lose. And that's what we have. You know what that means? Gamora and Star-Lord lost, which means even though she didn't find them through here, she is still going to gain not one, not two, but three out of the six Infinity Stones for the fight with Thanos. Oh, at least we earned the uh, power-ups. Let's see what three we found. We have the Space Stone, the Mind Stone, and the Soul Stone. So the Soul Stone, when that gets revealed, Thanos will gain 6 health. 
when the Mind Stone is revealed. From now on, heroes must play their hero card randomly on their turn. That is ridiculous. When that happens, you just lose. And then this one, from now on, heroes must ignore one movement symbol each turn. So what's going to happen is these three are going to be placed into his deck. And then when he draws them, they're going to come into play for the rest of the game. We're also, just because it's fun, going to place those gems into the Infinity Gauntlet. I don't think we have much of a chance. <laughs> All right, we have one more scenario to do, and that is against Thanos himself. Here he is. Let's see if we can take him on. Well, let's move to the Infinity Gauntlet locations. Wish us luck. Here we have the final mission. We need to take down Thanos. He's right up there. Each of these locations you can see is totally full of civilians. Yay! <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be playing Scarlet Witch and Vision against Thanos. Just like the Avengers in the movie, even though we just lost, we can't let that get to us. We have to focus on winning this game. That's all we have to do. If you think about it, it was a bit of a bummer. We did so well on those first two, I must have let my guard down a little bit on that third one. At least Thanos doesn't have all six of the Infinity Stones, otherwise we would have instantly lost. He only has three of them. Thanos will have a total of seven health for two player. His special rules are when a hero is KO'd, Than Thanos will not activate his BAM. Instead, that hero is eliminated from the game and replace it by a new hero. Then we have our BAM here where he's going to deal two damage to each hero in his location and one to each hero in an adjacent location. That means he's hitting half the board every time he BAMs. That is brutal. Uh, we have our overflow here. For each thug token that can't be added to a location, turn the leftmost civilian token in that location into a thug. If one or more thugs can't be added to a location and there are no civilian tokens there, yeah, he's just going to draw another card. And then his villainous plot. The heroes lose if the number of heroes eliminated from the game equals the starting number of heroes. So I cannot have him eliminate two heroes. The moment he does, we lose the game. What I've done with those three infinity stones is just place them somewhere in this deck randomly. So they will show up when they show up and they will negatively impact us for the rest of the game. Thanos has five different types of threat cards. He has two of the Chitari. Each of the thugs in this loca location requires three damage to defeat. All the other ones are unique and they're all minions. We've got Ebony Ma, we know him. After resolving a current master plan card, immediately play another one if he lands in this location. We have the Black Dwarf here. Whenever uh, Thanos activates his BAM effect, the Black Dwarf will also deal one damage to each hero in this location. We have Corvius Glaive here. He will just add two thugs to his location if ever Thanos ends his turn in his location. And finally, we have Proxima Midnight who will also activate on a BAM. Discard all civilians from this location. If there are no civilians in this location, deal one damage to one hero anywhere. Players get to choose. Oh. After reading all the threat cards out, you know I want to get rid of Ebony Ma and Proxima Midnight immediately. So let's hope that we can do that. Remember, we have our three power-ups now that we can use. So if we can generate two movement, we will also generate one punch and one heroism. But that punch and heroism cannot be used to activate this bottom one. We have to show that we, on the bottom of the cards, we have made these symbols. Does that make sense? So it can't be special effects. It can't be wilds. It has to be these actual symbols. With all of that in mind, let's go ahead and draw our cards. I just felt like Vision and Wanda. First of all, the WandaVision series was quite enjoyable. But second of all, I just feel like they had some of the biggest reasons as to why they wanted to defeat Thanos. So Vision will have a move and a heroism. He will have for his second card just a single punch. And his third card, he has his wild. For Wanda, she will have, ooh, that's Iconic Energy Shield. Cancel the first damage each year would suffer from the effects of the next Master Plan card. I love that card. Uh, she has a move and a punch, and she has two heroism. We are, of course, going to start with Thanos. He could already draw his one of his Infinity Stones right here. Okay, he doesn't. He moves one and bams, and then discard one civilian from Thanos' location and from both adjacent locations. Moving one is actually really nice because he will not hit us. We are not adjacent to him. So with his BAM, he's going to deal two damage here and one to each adjacent location. But we're not there. Proxima Midnight, though, will now activate with that BAM, discarding all of these civilians. If we don't have any civilians there, she's just going to deal damage to us. Oh, she's going to be brutal. 
The other BAM effect is the black dwarf, but no one is in his location, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we have to discard one civilian from Thanos' location, he can't do that, but one from both adjacent locations, he can do that. We're going to lose civilians fast, I feel. Both of these are discarded. Let's go ahead and draw Vision's first card, and he gets Evolving Intellect. Gain one wild token for each location with no empty slots. Oh, you know, that might be really good to play right now because we have three locations with no empty slots, and I don't think that's going to last. So yeah, let's yeah, let's definitely use this. We're going to play this. We're going to use a wild, and then we're going to gain three wild tokens. <laughs> now I could use them. Do I want to use them? You know what? I think I'm going to. I have a wild from this card. I'm gaining three wild tokens. I'm going to use all of that to deal four damage to Ebony Ma. We're just taking him out right now. I don't want to deal with him. That also means we can remove this threat token. We've completed one threat already. And then at the end of Vision's turn, look at this end of turn effect. You may gain one wild token for each other hero in this location. Well, Scarlet Witch is in his location, so he's going to gain one wild token. Wanda is next to go. She's going to reveal a double punch card. Okay, I think we've got to keep the double punch card for later when we want to hit Thanos. Uh, do I just want to do a... No, I'm moving a punch. Hmm. I could instead try and go for saving some civilians. Maybe I could save nine civilians. The problem is they're going to be destroying civilians, and I don't really think they're putting more out. So I'm going to run out of them quickly. But if I use all my punches for thugs... Oh, this is a hard choice. But if I stay in that location, I'm going to get a wild. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and use this one for the two heroism. I also have the wild from Vision. So that means two heroism plus the wild. We've just saved three out of the nine civilians that we need to. And not only that, we, because we're ending our turn here, can grab a wild token. <laughs> Thank you, Wakanda Fields. Vision will go next. He'll draw his card. He just has a single heroism. Okay, what do we want to do? You know what I could do? I could complete another threat card. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to play this. That'll give me a move, and I'll have one heroism here plus the two from Scarlet Witch. That's going to let us take out one of the Chaturi cards. That means we can move one over to here. We are going to spend all three heroism to get rid of the Chaturi. That's our second threat completed. Two more, and we've completed that mission. Although I don't know if I want to complete that too quickly. <laughs> Uh, and then I can use this wild token, and I think I'm going to. I'm going to use the wild token to rescue another civilian. That's our fourth one. We just need five more. Now, at the end of our turn, we could move Thanos to this location. Yeah, I think that's going to be an end game thing. Right now, I don't really want him in my location. Let's see what Thanos draws. He's going to move two locations. That means he's going to hit Scarlet Witch for two damage and hit uh, Vision for one. Then he's going to bam, oh, which means that Proxima Midnight is going to hit Vision because I can't have her hit uh, Scarlet Witch, otherwise she's going to die. <laughs> so they're each essentially going to take two points of damage. Thanos is going to take two giant steps, one, two, dealing two damage to the Scarlet Witch. She's going to place both of these cards on the bottom of her deck. I think I'm going to do it this way to have the punches higher up. Vision also is going to take one point of damage. He's going to put this one heroism card at the bottom of his deck. The Black Dwarf would deal damage in his location because of the BAM effect. And then over here, Proxima Midnight would destroy any civilians, but there aren't any there. So she's going to deal one damage to Vision. So Vision is going to discard to the bottom of his deck his single punch card. We each only have one card left in our hand. Oh boy. I almost forgot. We're also going to spawn thugs. One here one over here and since this location is full the leftmost one gets flipped into a thug well that certainly escalated quickly <laughs> let's draw our card for the scarlet witch oh she's got a two move do you remember two move two of our power up cards would give us something with two move we would get an additional punch and an additional heroism so yeah i'm let's do it it's going to give us a total of three move then because we also still have a move and a heroism from vision but I think, I think we'll use it. We're going to use the two heroism that we have here to then save both of these civilians. That's two more. That's a total of six. We only need to save three more. 
We have then a total of three movement. I'm going to use one of the movement. Sorry, when I get to having this many tokens or actions, I actually take them all as a token pool and then I use them so I don't accidentally miss them. <laughs> I'll use my next movement token and I'm going to move myself over to here and then I'm going to use that one punch and the wild that I have from before to do two punches to Proxima Midnight. I need to take her out immediately. If I don't, I'm going to die real quick. <laughs> I have one additional movement. I think I might actually use that to move myself from the sanctuary over here to the quantum tunnel because there's three more civilians here. If I can save those three, I can complete that uh, mission. Remember, I need to complete two missions and then I can actually hit Thanos. Vision is next to go. He has a whopping one card in hand. We're gonna draw, this one gives him, oh, a heroism and a punch. Now, he has two move from Scarlet Witch already. You know what that means? We have both of these in play. So we will have two move plus a punch and plus a heroism. I'm gonna just grab those as tokens so I don't forget. And you know what? We are totally going to play this card because that will give us, we have a move, we have a punch then, and we have a heroism. So we're also going to gain a wild token. <laughs> so we're going to have a, a heroism, a punch. Let me just show you all the actions we're going to be able to take. This is insane. For Vision's turn, he'll have two movement, two heroism, two punches, and one wild. <laughs> Let's do this. First things first, we're going to use our two heroism to save two more wonderful civilians. We are one away from completing that mission. Then we're going to use one movement to move ourselves over here to Proxima Midnight's location. She has two health left. No, she doesn't. We're going to use those two punches. We're going to take out those two health that she has, and she has been defeated. <laughs> that is going to be our third threat that has been cleared. We need one more threat to clear. I still have a move and a wild. With our move and wild, I think I'm going to have Vision jump over here with Scarlet Witch for his move, and then he's going to use the wild as a heroism. So we have one of the three of the Chartari complete. This is nice because if we can complete this mission, or I should say threat card, we'll complete the threat mission. And then we just need to rescue one of these, and then Thanos becomes vulnerable. Then we have to not die while we try and deal him seven points of damage. <laughs> okay, now it is Scarlet Witch's turn. She'll go ahead and draw one card. She has a move and a punch. So she has right now from Vision a heroism and a punch, and that's a move and a punch. If she plays this card, she will have a move, a punch, and a heroism. And that will gain her, because of her power-up, an additional wild. So I think, as much as I wanted to play this, and we are being very risky here. We could just lose uh, if Thanos moves into our location. Because uh, he's going to... Oh, is, this, is this a bad idea? We're going to do it. We're going to do it anyways. We've got a move and a punch. So we've got four total symbols. A move, a punch, a heroism, a punch, and then because of that power-up, a wild. With the one heroism and one wild, we're going to complete the second Chitari card here. That means that is our fourth total threat that has been removed. We've now completed the threat mission. But that means Thanos is now going to activate every two of our turns. Now I have a move and two punches available to me, but I can't believe it. I don't think I'm going to use them. I don't want to move. I'm in a good position and this end of turn effect is awesome. You want to read it upside down with me? <laughs> you may swap the position of any two hero cards of your choice in the storyline. Because the two movement gives me two free power-ups, I think I'm going to swap both of these so that way we have the two move that uh, Vision can use assuming we don't die here it's now Thanos's turn he's going to draw this card and he gets one of the stones Thanos gains six health may go above starting health oh my gosh he has 13 health well there's good and bad to that <laughs> uh, we didn't die but now we have to deal 13 damage to him I don't know how we're gonna do that uh, it's going to be Vision's turn. He's going to draw a card. Yeah, he gets a move and a heroism. He's all about heroism. Let's. So he's got two move already. So that two move is going to generate for him one punch and one heroism. Let's go ahead and use this one. It's not going to give us our power up, even though we're generating a punch from one of the other cards. Remember, we can't use it here. So I'm not going to generate that or use that power up. But let's use this one. So we're going to have for a total... We have three movement, we'll have one, two heroism, and one punch. 
You better believe we know what we're going to do with one of our heroism. We're going to save the final civilian that we need to have saved a total of nine. That's pretty awesome. So that means he is now vulnerable. Now, if we can defeat nine thugs, we actually could draw a card and heal ourselves. But I don't think that's happening. We haven't defeated a single thug yet. I think then we'll just use our second heroism just to save another one. We'll just discard it, just getting it off the board. Then we can use our three movement, one, two, three, to move into Thanos' location. He is now vulnerable to attacks because we have completed two missions. Let's hit him for a whopping one point of damage. <laughs> He's down to 12 health. Yes, look at that stack of health. Uh, very thematic and very obnoxious. Now it's Scarlet Witch's turn. She has one movement and one heroism. Okay, so she could play this to get two movement, but that means she can't even get into the same location as Thanos. She could also play this so that she could cancel a point of damage uh, from the next master plan card. And you know what? I think we have to do this. That does mean that for symbols this turn, she only has a move and a heroism. With that heroism, we'll just save the last civilian. You're welcome. Too bad you can't help us complete more missions. <laughs> and then we're going to move to this location. Now, the nice thing is when we end our turn there, we can move to any location. And as crazy as it is, I think we're going to move ourselves here. We don't get this end of turn effect. But if we end a couple turns here, we could generate some wilds that hopefully could help us hit Thanos. Okay, it's Thanos' turn. If he doesn't move and he bams, he's going to deal us two damage. That will cancel one because of the psychonic energy shield, but we'll still die because both of us will get KO'd. So let's hope that's not a zero. Okay, it's a two. He's going to move two and he's going to bam. Oh no. Actually, I think we're okay. You see how there's no target symbol here? That means he's not going to activate uh, Corvius Glade that's in that location. He knows he's vulnerable now, so he's going to run away from us. Scaredy cat! <laughs> he's going to bam, dealing two damage here, one to each adjacent location. And then he's going to discard one civilian from his location and each adjacent location. There's none over here. Vision will go ahead and draw a card now, and he gets two heroism. <laughs> so unhelpful right now. There's no civilians to save. Yeah, he has no symbols from the Scarlet Witch. So I think all he's going to do is, yeah, I think he's just going to play this for the wild. With that wild, we'll defeat one thug. Woohoo! And then, because we'll end our turn here in the Wakanda fields, we'll generate one wild that he can use. Scarlet Witch is next to go. She's going to draw a card, and she gets the Psychonic Energy Blast. Three punches against a single enemy in an adjacent location. Why isn't Thanos next to her? <laughs> well, she has a wild. She could go out in a blaze of glory. She can move one locate. You know, you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to play uh, the Psychonic Energy Blast. This means from the Wild from Vision, we can use to move one space. Oh, boy. And we're going to deal three punches. One, two, three to Thanos, bringing him down to nine health, I believe. Thanos will now go next. Let's see what he does. Oh, he's going to kill Scarlet Witch. There's nothing I can do about it. I knew it was going to happen. He's going to bam. He will deal two damage in his location and one adjacent, but he's going to move. So that's going to miss her. However, she's in the Black Dwarf's location and he'll de he deals one damage to each hero in his location whenever there's a bam effect. Thanos is going to move to here. He can bam. No one is in his area or adjacent. He's going to place out those thugs. And then, unfortunately, our Scarlet Witch here is going to die. She has to lose the last card in her hand. She has no more health, so she is out of the game. With being out of the game, we are half of the way to losing. But I do get to grab a new hero for her. Uh, I think I know just the one. However, before we show you who respawns, we have to have Vision go. He's pretty unhappy. He gets Solar Gem Blast. Add all punches at the bottom of the last four hero cards in the storyline. Deal that much damage to a single enemy in your location. Wow, that's why I brought him out. Uh, he's not, that's not a great card right now. Do you want to know what the four last cards are? <laughs> I'll show you how many punches are on those four last cards. How about a whopping zero? Yeah, we need to get some punches into the story or into the storyline. And you know what's also great is that the card that Scarlet Witch left with gave him no symbols. So he's just going to use the two heroism for nothing. He can't even use it. And he's at the Wakanda Fields. He could gain one wild token for each other hero in this location. There's no heroes in this location. So he gets nothing. 
Now I think it's time to bring in the big guns. We're going to bring in Captain Marvel. She can deal damage in adjacent locations, has tons of punches. I'm hoping that she can change the tide of this game. I've confirmed in the rules that when it's your turn, you get to draw four cards and start anywhere on the board. How about let's start in the same location as Thanos? What does that sound like? <laughs> let's draw our four cards. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say she's one of my favorites in this game because of all the damage she can do adjacent. Oh, look at that. That's a two puncher. That's what I was hoping to see. We've got a movement. We've got a photon blast punch in her location and two punches in an adjacent location. And her first, for a fourth card is another two puncher. And I'm not even going to show you. We're just going to play the two puncher card. Thanos is going to get slammed by Captain Marvel, losing two more health, putting him down to seven health remaining. Thanos will activate next. He's going to draw his card. He's going to just move three, not bam. Oh my gosh, I thought that was going to end the game. Because if he had bammed, he would do two damage to Vision and kill him. There is no bam here. He's just going to move three and drop out three thugs. He's going to run away from that crazy Captain Marvel. One, two, three. Drop one thug here, one over here, and one on this side. But no bam. No bam. Vision has two punches from Captain Marvel. He is also going to draw a card, and he has intangibility. You cannot take any damage until the beginning of your next turn. Well, that would have been nice a while ago. Okay, so if I've got two punches there, I'm going to hit him hard. I'm going to do the Solar Gem Blast. This is only going to deal two damage with that because of this card, but we also have this card. So we're going to deal two damage with the Solar Gem Blast, two with Captain Marvel, and then we're going to use that Wild for another. That's a total of two, four, five damage to Thanos. Five damage to him. That brings him down to two health only. We only have two more points of damage to do. The problem is, is the card that we just played gave no symbols to Captain Marvel. Is she going to be able to get close enough to be able to hit him? Captain Marvel will draw her card. She gets another photon blast. He had tons of damage. That's what I wanted. My biggest problem is, is I can't get over to him. I actually think the only card I'm going to play is this move card. I'm going to hope, beyond hope, that somehow we can still hit him for some damage. And although we have that move card, we're not even going to move. We're going to stay where we are, and we're going to swap two cards on the timeline. We're going to swap the move that we just played with the two punch card here. So hopefully Vision can use that on his turn, barring he doesn't die here. Thanos is next to go. He's going to draw and get mad Titan. I was worried about this card. He's going to move three, not bam, but he's going to heal up to five health. That's going to put him back up to seven and he'll deal a damage to Captain Marvel. Really? So Captain Marvel, out of her three cards, I think she's going to put a photon blast on the bottom of her deck because he's going to be in her location. I want to punch him. He's going to run away from Vision 1, 2, 3 and dealing that point of damage to Captain Marvel. And 5 more health puts him back up to 7. It's Vision's turn. He's going to go ahead and draw a card and he gets 1 Heroism. Totally useless. He's got 2 punches. Nothing that he can do with it. Ugh. I'll just go ahead and play my Visionary and I cannot take damage until the beginning of my next turn. Because of that, I think I'll move into this location and clear out two more thugs. You never know. Maybe we can take out enough thugs. <laughs> Why would I be fighting thugs normally? We're also going to place this here to say he's immune to damage. Captain Marvel will then draw a card. She gets just a basic wild. You know what she's going to do. Double punch. She's not even going to move. That will deal two damage and should have killed him had he not healed. He now has five health. It is now Thanos' turn. He's going to draw his next card, and he gets the Mind Stone. From now on, heroes must play their cards randomly on their turn. <laughs> this is just going to get crazy. Vision only has one card in hand, and he's next to activate. He's going to draw, and it's going to be the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter which one he's going to play. He's going to play one Heroism. He has two punches, so he can punch the Black Dwarf twice, and one Heroism, save this civilian. You guys, I think I just, I think I'm going to lose here. I don't think there's a chance. Captain Marvel will be next to go. She will draw a card. She's got a two movement card. Let's shuffle these up and we'll play this one. She gets the two movement card. So she has two movement and a Heroism. Oh, two movement. So two movement, that means she'll get a punch. So she can punch Thanos at least. And then she has two useless Heroism. 
let's go ahead and take off that one point of health that Thanos had. That was with our one punch. Four more damage. Four more. All right, now it's back to Thanos. He'll go ahead and draw his next card. He's almost out of his deck. We have now the third stone, the space stone. From now on, heroes must ignore one movement each turn. Well, that's actually a pretty big bummer for the team because Vision was going to be able to hit Thanos if he didn't move. Now, that's not even going to matter because he's going to lose one of his movement. Yeah, okay, so he's got one punch or one heroism. We'll shuffle these up and we'll play this one. Okay, we at least have one punch. So we have one punch and normally we'd get two movement, which would trigger all that awesome stuff, an additional punch, an additional heroism, but we only have one movement. I think with this, we'll just take the one health off of the black dwarf. I think he's got, what, four health remaining. One, two, three, or three health remaining. And we're going to use the one movement to move this way. At our end of our turn, I wish we could do this, but we're still not going to... We're not in the same location. Captain Marvel's too far away. I think what I could have done was spawn Captain Marvel here, and we could have generated some wild tokens. That would have been better instead of going directly for Thanos. But I got overzealous. We'll move to Captain Marvel. She's got her two cards plus this one. We're going to shuffle these up and then go ahead and pick this one. She has her Photon Blast. If only she can move. But she'll be able to deal two damage to Thanos and then she can deal two damage to a thug, I guess. Two more damage to Thanos brings him down to two health again. And then why don't we deal two damage in adjacent location? Uh, Corvius Glaive will take two damage. Okay, now it's back to Thanos. We'll flip his card, and he is going to move five locations and bam. Five locations, one, two, three, four, five. He will bam, dealing two damage here, one to each adjacent location. That means that Captain Marvel will have to discard one card. She only has one card left in her hand. <laughs> Reach down to one health. He is going to activate the target effect here. Uh, Corvius Glaive would try and place two thugs. That's going to turn two of these over into thugs. Then, unfortunately, Thanos is going to try and place two thugs in that location. He can place one here. And then it says if one or more thug can't be added to a location, he's going to play another Mastermind card. But let's finish this one first. We're going to place out two more thugs here and two more thugs here. And then let's see what he's going to do next. We'll flip our card. He's not going to move. He's just going to bam. And that means he's going to kill Captain Marvel. <laughs> So somehow Vision stayed alive through the whole thing, but Captain Marvel and the Scarlet Witch both were killed and we just lost the game. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't know about you guys, but I had a blast. That was so much fun. I can't believe we started off so strong. I felt like, oh, this is going to be a walk in the park. I'm not going to have any of the Infinity Stones. No, instead we had three. All of them were out on the board. Uh, it, just think if he hadn't gotten that six health or if he hadn't drawn that card to heal himself five damage oh my gosh right when he was down to two health yeah it was great this was great i'm sure i made some errors because i played all of this in one go but it was so worth it to play i hope you guys can see just how much fun this game can actually be you know when i first played it i felt like eh about it but now with all the different villains i think there's 28 villain villains there's something like 60 or 50 different heroes all the different combinations the different locations yeah i mean you don't have to play against those specific minions i just did that because that's what came in the thanos box but we could do totally different minions there's actually a sinister six scenario too where you have six villains out on the board i really want to try and play that anyways thank you so much for watching let vernon know if you're interested in him painting some of your minis it is absolutely glorious they just look so great i love how they look on the board really brings this game to life thank you so much for watching i'll see you at the next stop